Nestled in the central highlands of Mexico, the picturesque San Miguel de Allende is renowned for its colonial charm, colorful cobblestone streets, and well-preserved Spanish architecture. This UNESCO World Heritage Site is a hub for art, attracting creatives from all around the globe with its numerous galleries, art schools, and cultural festivals. But if you're looking for authenticity, it may not be for you. The city is home to around 25,000 retirees from the US, Canada, and Europe, so walking its streets often feels like you're not in Mexico at all. Nevertheless, it is a stunningly beautiful and enchanting place well worth a visit. Let's check it out. Buenos dias. I am here in San Miguel de Allende. My first full day, I arrived yesterday, um, but I didn't do anything because I'm super tired. You know, I thought I was over the COVID, but every few days, a wave of fatigue, and I just want to stay in the room <clears throat> and rest. So I got here yesterday, and I just stayed in the room. That's what I did. Anyway, I'm up now. This is probably the most fancy town I've been to in Mexico, full of tourists, mostly American, it seems to me. You hear English everywhere. The menus are in Spanish and English. Everything seems to cater to an English-speaking crowd. Um, and I can see retirees as far as the eye can see. It is absolutely beautiful here, but I can already feel that it's not my scene, but uh, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, they're, it's beautiful. It is beautiful here. I can see why so many uh, people choose San Miguel to retire. Anyway, I'm going to eat my breakfast and then get going. Here we go. The absolutely gorgeous Parroquia de San Miguel, often referred to as a giant pink wedding cake, is the centerpiece of the city. Built in 1709 over the previous dilapidated church of the previous century, its neo-Gothic facade came later in 1890, designed by an indigenous Mexican named Zeferino Gutierrez. Rumored to be inspired by a postcard of a Belgian church hanging in his home, Gutierrez enlisted the help of other indigenous men who, because of being illiterate, relied on Gutierrez drawing in the soil instead of a blueprint resulting in pink pilasters, balustrades, spires, and steeples that lean slightly to the side. Fronting the church is the city's main meeting hub, El Jardín Allende, known by locals simply as El Jardín. Designed in the French style with wrought iron benches and filled with Indian laurel trees, the plaza is constantly occupied with folks relaxing, kids playing, and at night becomes a lively festival with live music galore. On the south side of the Jardin lies the Casa de Allende Museum. This 18th century mansion was the home of Ignacio Allende. 
hero of the Mexican War of Independence who led the rebellion army for a short time before being betrayed and executed by the Spanish for treason. The house and museum comprises 24 rooms, many which are preserved as they looked when Allende lived there, with interesting information detailing how the wealthy lived at the time. The city of San Miguel added his name to its title after gaining independence from Spain. After his execution, Allende's body was decapitated and his head placed in a cage and hung outside the Alondiga in Guanajuato for all to see. The rest of the museum is dedicated to the history of the region around San Miguel. Probably the most photographed spot in the city, Aldama Street offers a view straight out of a fairy tale. It's quaint cobblestone path leading right up to the pink towers of the church in the background. A few blocks south, you'll find Parque Benito Juarez, San Miguel's largest green space offering serene winding paths, sports facilities, and playgrounds. And if you're up for it, from here you can hike up to El Mirador, a lookout point above the city. Pretty, but once you've seen that view in Guanajuato, nothing compares. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it for a real spectacular view. I forgot to grab cash when I left my hotel room. I only have 100 pesos on me. So, no nuns farts for me, maybe later. Okay, here I go. I am stunned. This town, I don't even feel like I'm in Mexico. I feel like I'm in some fancy fucking like Southern California town. I hear all these women trying to get into a cab and like the cab driver speaking Spanish and they're like, what? What, do you speak any English? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, Whoa. Get me out of here. Someone on my bus ride to San Miguel recommended I try La Azotea, a rooftop tapas bar and grill for their jicama tacos, shrimp tacos that use a thin slice of jicama instead of a tortilla. All right, let's try this. It's falling apart extremely easily. Mm. It's very good, but it falls apart. Super easy. Mm. 
So, I'm sitting in the hot bean here, which is lovely. Super, super pretty. So in that restaurant, it seemed like mm, the majority of the, I don't want to keep saying Americans, because, you know, they could be Canadians. They're definitely one or the other. Out of, I don't know, maybe 15 that I was eavesdropping on, um, only one woman attempted and ordered in Spanish, and all the rest just immediately with the English with all the waiters, and the waiters spoke English as well. So it seems to be like this town caters to that, and if you don't speak Spanish, you're okay here. But it's, you know, it just is, I'm trying to hide my cigarette. I don't know why, like, I don't, I'm smoking, okay? It's fine, you know, that's great that this town does that and that, you know, tons of America, it's great. But if the roles were reversed, you know, people would be up in arms. If there was like a town in the States that catered to Mexicans and everybody spoke Spanish and you could go there and speak Spanish and you didn't have to learn any English, that would be like, you know, a huge scandal. People would be up in arms about it. Come here, speak English, learn English, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's just the hypocrisy I find very interesting. Um, and really, it's when you boil it down, it's racism. It, that's what it is. I said it. I said what I said. So, buenos dias. Yesterday was kind of a wash because I really didn't feel well. Again, with this COVID fatigue. Today I'm feeling a little bit better. I slept a lot yesterday. So let's see what we can get done today. First, some breakfast at a place that was recommended to me. Let's go. my palate first. Fancy schmancy. It's much better with a clean palate. Okay, that was very good. Um, everything here is more expensive than anywhere else I've been to in Mexico, which I already knew coming here. Anyway, gonna check out um, a couple more churches and a couple buildings and a neighborhood that's supposed to have a lot of street art, but first, <clears throat> so I'm just throwing my face. I'm gonna sneak into the fanciest five-star hotel in San Miguel because I heard there's a beautiful view from the restaurant at the top. So I'm just gonna walk in and get in the elevator and go up and see what happens. Let's see if I get thrown in.
Nobody even questioned me. I just walked in like I own the place. And uh, yeah, beautiful hotel. Nearby is the Instituto Allende, the art school responsible for the influx of foreigners to San Miguel. As a participant in the U.S. GI Bill after World War II, artistic veterans flocked to the once stagnant town, taking advantage of the free education. From the 1950s to the 1970s, hundreds of students from the U.S. attended here. Today, it offers degrees in visual and fine arts in association with the University of Guanajuato. Well, I made the mistake of actually speaking to the person at the desk. I should have just walked right in. She said they're only letting students in right now, so. Yeah. Heading back towards the center of town, you'll spot the beautiful dome of the Church of the Immaculate Conception, known by locals as Las Monjas. Built between 1755 and 1842, it still to this day continues to serve as a convent for the Sisters of the Order of the Immaculate Conception. You can't miss the giant bull sculpture fronting the bright yellow Central Cultural Ignacio Ramirez. Once a convent, this 18th century structure now serves as a cultural center offering exhibits and classes in the arts. Its most visited piece lies in the former dining hall of the convent, the unfinished work of famous Mexican muralist David Alfaro Siqueiros, the life and work of General Ignacio Allende. Un vaso de Jamaica? Oh, es jicama, no Jamaica. Tengo agua de Jamaica. Ah, sí? Ok, eso. Gracias. ¿Eres chico o grande? Grande. Sí, gracias. Si jicama es esto. Sí, yo sé. Es que lo leí mal. Sí, no hay problema. Necesito mis lentes. Gracias. ¿Cuánto es? 45. Ok, gracias. De nada, que te bien. Igualmente. Slightly northeast of the center, the Templo de San Francisco de Assisi was the last major colonial building built in San Miguel. Situated in a peaceful plaza, its dazzling churrigueresque facade is the best example of 18th century architecture in the city. Its neoclassic interior is dominated by a huge colonnaded tabernacle, complemented by nine stone altars around the nave, each made of rose-colored limestone.
Okay, heading into a neighborhood called Guadalupe, which is supposed to have a bunch of beautiful street art and hopefully a different vibe than the Centro, which is so touristy. Let's see. Ya soy alguien batalle bastante desde morro bien movido. Las cosas salieron bien. Gracias a Dios ya ando bien vestido. Ahora en restaurantes finos y un deportivo también. Recuerdo antes no traía ni un cinco, siempre andaba pensativo. Valorar lo que logré Mi primer millón que yo gané Gracias a Dios Reloj Cublot defendió Dios Con porte fino navegando Mi primer millón que yo gané Gracias a Dios Reloj Cublot defendió Dios Con porte fino navegando Bastante noches así Siempre chingón Una rebelión Brindamos por lo que hacemos aquí Sigue navegando sin el compás Siempre luchando contra las ondas Tantas peleas Perdí la cuenta Mi diligencia Mi primer millón Que voy a ganar Lo gastaré en mis sueños En el amor En todas las cosas que yo quiero Now, walking around here kind of makes me change my opinion about San Miguel. I like it around here. Centro is just so, it's too nice. It's too perfect. It's too beautiful. It's too fancy. It just rubs me the wrong way. But uh, the outside neighborhoods are cute. Also very beautiful. More eclectic, more a mix with the locals. I don't know what it is with me, but I have this deep aversion to like pretentious, fancy, over the top kind of things like that. I don't know what it is, but when things are like uber fancy and overpriced and just too perfect, I don't like it. I feel like it's fake and I don't like fake, but I like the mix of old and new construction here uh, seems to be like, you know, different uh, socioeconomic situations happening right next to each other. Um, the street art here is amazing. It's really pretty to walk down the streets. But I do see a lot of still expats walking around, as they like to call themselves, or immigrants. So yeah, but this is a really cool neighborhood.
from now on, I will require all my Caesar settings to come like purple edible rose petals. I think they're edible. I hope they're edible. Usually when I get Italian food in Mexico, I'm always disappointed and I say never again. Because, you know, the food, the Mexican food is so fucking good. But once in a while, I have a craving for Italian. So, let's see how this one goes. I'm not mad at it. They're very big on artificial sweetener in Mexico, I've noticed, also. I always have to ask for regular sugar. So I just met a two couples from Wisconsin who saw me videoing and asked me if I was a food critic. And I told them who I was and that I have, I just started this YouTube channel and yada yada. Anyway, what was interesting is, you know, I asked them like, how did you even hear about San Miguel and how did you... So the one couple's just visiting, but the other couple lives here three months out of the year. Uh, which a lot of people spend winter here. And he was telling me that, um, and I had read this also, that veterans of um, the military using the GI Bill were able to come to San Miguel to go to art school. Anyway, so he was telling me that he had read about that and they decided to check it out. They came down here, fell in love with it, which I can't blame them, and they've been coming down ever since. Anyway, they're gonna follow my YouTube channel, so they'll be one of the hundreds of you guys who are following me. But I appreciate it. I don't need thousands of subscribers. I make these videos mostly because I I like doing it. I enjoy making films, and um, you know, if people enjoy them, that makes me happy. And if it's, if it's 700, that's cool with me. That was very good. I am going to head to the Jardin one last time because tomorrow I am going to Caretaro. So that will end my time in San Miguel. Well, finishing off my time in San Miguel with some helado. So yeah, San Miguel, it's absolutely stunningly beautiful. There's no doubt why so many Americans and Canadians choose to winter here or retire here. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. A little too fancy for me and a little too gringo-fied for me. But it is stunning. Anyway, that's it. Tomorrow, off to Caretaro. Adios. Forgot my lactate pill. Forgot my lactate pill.